Good morning. So today I'll talk to you about a study that we are implementing on the safety of the hepatitis E vaccine following the first mass reactive vaccination campaign in Bentu, South Sudan. So hepatitis E is a virus that exists worldwide. Uh, the genotype that exists in Africa and Asia causes large outbreaks, particularly in settings with limited access to water and sanitation. The infection is self-limiting but can lead to acute liver failure. Uh, in uh, end death, the case fatality rate is less than 1% in the general population, um, but the hallmark of the disease is actually that pregnant women, and particularly in their second or third trimester, are at risk of acute liver failure, fetal loss, and mortality, and the case fatality rate has been documented to be over 25%. There's no specific treatment for hepatitis E infection or disease. There is one vaccine, it's called Hecolin. Uh, it's a recombinant vaccine. It's been licensed for use uh, among those 16 years or older. It's given in a three-dose schedule at zero, one, and six months. Uh, the phase three cl clinical trial showed a 100% efficacy, uh, and uh, a later analysis showed a 93% efficacy at 54 months. Uh, the vaccine has not yet been WHO pre-qualified, but uh, in 2015, the WHO SAGE group issued a recommendation for its use in outbreaks, including among pregnant women. So hepatitis E in pregnancy, I mentioned that uh, hepatitis E increases the risk of maternal death and adverse pregnancy outcomes. And these two figures are from a systematic review conducted in 2020. And the force plots show the really large effect that hepatitis E has on <clears throat> maternal mortality with an odd ratio of seven <coughs> for maternal death. And for interuterine death, the odds ratio is also large at three. However, uh, the pregnant women are those who stand to gain the most from this protection, from this vaccine. There is a very large, there's a evidence gap on the safety of this vaccine in pregnancy. As with most clinical trials, pregnant women were excluded from the clinical trials for Hecolin. So the evidence that we actually have on the safety of this vaccine in pregnancy come from inadvertent exposure during these trials um, where women were inadvertently uh, pregnant while vaccinated. So in the phase three trial of Hecolin, uh, 37 pregnant women were exposed, but no increased risk was documented, but it's a very small sample, right? In the same manufacturer that makes Hecolin also makes an HPV vaccine, and interestingly, they used the Hecolin vaccine as the placebo in their uh, phase three trial of the HPV vaccine. In this trial, also 66 pregnant women were inadvertently exposed to the vaccine, uh, and they concluded as well that there was no increased risk of neg negative pregnancy outcomes. Um, and then finally, there's a phase four trial of Hecolin ongoing in Bangladesh at the moment. Uh, it's targeting women of childbearing age. And again, pregnant women are excluded. However, um, it's a large population and it's expected again that there will be some inadvertent exposure of pregnant women to this vaccine. So those results are pending. As I mentioned, <clears throat> the WHO clearly, despite this evidence gap, uh, weighed the, the large effect of hepatitis E on pregnant women and made these, issued these recommendations in 2015 and again in 2021, uh, recommending the use of this vaccine in outbreaks. So this is a photo of the Benchu IDP camp, the aerial, uh, aerial view in 2022 when the camp had been uh, flooded, well the surrounds of the camp have been flooded, so this is where the outbreak is that we're discussing. Uh, it's an internally displaced persons camp that was established in December 2013. It has around uh, 112,000 residents. There's very limited access to water and sanitation in this camp, despite it being established for almost a decade. Uh, and there was a, a relatively large hepatitis E outbreak in 2015 with over 2,000 documented cases. Uh, and since then, there have been ongoing sort of low-level transmission. Uh, a new outbreak was declared in August of 2021 by the Ministry of Health in response to an increase in rapid test positive cases. So this epi curve shows in orange the, the rapid test positive cases and in green are those uh, suspect cases who tested negative. And the, the uh, timeline on the graph shows the declaration of the outbreak and then the vaccination campaign which was done in three, in three rounds. So alongside this mass reactive vaccination campaign we conducted a research study uh, but just to clarify just briefly about the campaign itself, 
Uh, the campaign targeted 27,000 Benchu IDP camp residents uh, who were 16 to 40 years old and uh, pregnant women were included in this vaccination. So they had the option to be vaccinated. Um, it was implemented in three rounds in March, April, and October last year of 2022. And each round had a high administrative coverage reaching over 90% of the target. A uh, coverage survey we conducted after the third round showed that 84% of pregnant women self-reported receiving at least one dose of the vaccine, which was actually not different than the general population. So as I mentioned, alongside this vaccination campaign, we've conducted some operational research, which has several objectives that are shown here uh, along the timeline of the vaccination campaign. We conducted two vaccination coverage service, surveys following the second and third uh, rounds, as well as a focus group discussion to look at the feasibility and acceptability of this vaccine. We also had the objective to look at the two-dose vaccine effectiveness, and so the results of that were presented yesterday. I hope some of you followed the presentation by my colleague Vincent uh, at the MSF Scientific Days. We uh, showed that there was a, a pretty good, it's still preliminary results, but a pretty high two-dose effectiveness of around 80, 84 um, percent. And then the third objective was to look at safety in pregnant women, and that's what I'll discuss today. So as I said, our objective was to evaluate the safety of exposure to hecolin uh, during pregnancy. So we're looking at at least one dose. And our outcome was uh, a composite pregnancy loss outcome. So we looked at miscarriage and stillbirth. And then our secondary outcomes, we want to distinguish between risk for miscarriage, stillbirth, preterm birth, uh, neonatal death, and neonatal malformation. And this uh, figure, the schematic, just shows what I mean. So this is an observational study. It's not a clinical trial. So we have all the pregnant women in Benchu IDP camp who were possibly exposed to vaccination. Uh, and then we will follow them until their, well, we have followed them until their pregnancy outcome. So how this happened practically, we, we conducted an exhaustive census. We went door to door to all of the shelters in Benchu camp um, asked, and interviewed pregnant women, women of reproductive age about their pregnancy status. Um, they were required to be a resident of the camp during the vaccination campaign period, and we asked for written consent. We conducted a questionnaire on their pregnancy history and as well assess their vaccination exposure. And then for those women who had not yet delivered by the time we did this census, uh, we conducted a follow-up visit at their home 28 days after their delivery date to assess their, their pregnancy outcomes, and we also reassessed their vaccination status. So today, I'm only going to be able to present preliminary descriptive results. Um, we are deep in the analysis at the moment, um, so I hope you'll come back for next time when we present our analytical results. So the team spoke to 20,674 women of childbearing age, and 18% of them um, were either were pregnant between the 1st of January and the interview, and were residents of the camp. And among those, we have pregnancy outcomes known for 92%. So this cohort will then be split into different groups depending on the timing of the, the possible vaccine exposure in terms of their, just, their pregnancy and gestation, and we'll see that in the next slide. But so the main cohort are women who were um, pregnant during the vaccination campaign. We also have a, a cohort of women who delivered prior to the vaccination campaign, which we will use as our uh, prenatal bias uh, indicator study. Then we also have women who were exposed to the vaccine prior to conception, and so we'll also be able to evaluate a bit of um, the risk in that group. This figure uh, just shows, again, one of our challenges about, uh, so each line represents a gestational age, and then the, the orange bar is the vaccination period. So we have women who um, are at different stages of their vaccination, uh, at their uh, different stages of their conception, uh, possibly exposed to the vaccine. So this will be taken into account in the analysis. We also have these other two groups of women who were exposed prior to the vaccination who were pregnant prior to the vaccination campaign and then also afterwards. Okay, so who are these women? We have this 3,000, almost 3,500 women. They had a mean of 25 years. They had a median of two previous pregnancies with a range of zero to 11. Uh, and 21 of them, so 0.6%, reported having jaundice in their current pregnancy. And 78.7% reported, self-reported, having had at least one dose of the vaccine. 90% of these women delivered in a health facility. 
10% uh, reported that they had a complication during delivery, and 16 or 0.5% reported that they had a cesarean section. And so our uh, key outcome is the, the live birth, which was reported by 93.5% uh, of women. And we have 57 women who reported that they experienced a stillbirth. So what can we say at this stage? So we're not yet ready to conclude about the safety of the vaccine in pregnancy, but we can say uh, the vaccination coverage in pregnancy in, in our cohort was about on par with what we found in the coverage survey. Access to delivery care is pretty high in Bentu IDP camp. The, um, in, in South Sudan in general, 19% of women deliver in a facility, so 90% is much higher, um, obviously with the, the uh, humanitarian response in the MSF hospital there, women are seeking care. And we also found that the stillbirth rate is lower than the national average. So challenges we have, um, it's a, a low power, we have a low power to detect rare outcomes, so perinatal mortality is a, low, is a rare outcome, as well as maternal death. Um, we are using self-reported dates for conception and delivery, so we don't have ultrasound gestational age, and that's a tricky one, especially because hepatitis E is related to um, preterm birth, and this is also something we wanted to look at. Uh, and we also have a very short follow-up to look at malformations, so we came back to visit women 28 days after their delivery date, so we don't have the opportunity to evaluate any malformations, which, which may uh, be visualized after 28 days. However, it's a large cohort. When you consider the evidence on this vaccine in pregnancy before is about less than 100 people, this cohort will really provide a lot of evidence, hopefully, about this vaccine. We have a pretty good retention and follow-up, and we have some planned analytical methods to take the challenges of observational studies into account. So, uh, in conclusion, preliminarily, I say uh, we found rather ex okay uh, pregnancy outcomes, better than the national estimates for the country. We're in the midst of our data cleaning and analysis, and we look forward to being able to share our uh, results with you next time. So, thank you to our partners, and to thank you very much to the camp, and thank you to all of these individuals who are involved in the study. Thank you for your time. <laughs>